Hey everybody, welcome back to Save Your Game, and welcome back to Storm Weavers. I thought I'd jump back into this. I've been thinking about getting back into it for a while, but I uh, haven't really had a chance to jump in. I've been working on a North Guard Uncharted Lands video, working on the script for that and recording some footage for it, uh, but this is just a simple thing to break out and to put have something on the channel because I haven't posted anything in a while. So I thought we would go back into Storm Weavers which is our solo tabletop game, and we did the prologue to the story. We died, and then we got thrown into this crossroads where we spent the night, and now we've woken up, and we get to choose a direction. Here's, we've got our map here. We've got our health cubes. We've got about 19, I'm sorry, 18 health, and yeah, we're, we're ready to go. I think we're just going to choose a direction here, and I think we want to go west so we'll make a note that we're kind of we're going west we're going to see what happens we're going to move to 84 ah spoilers <laughs> the mound of Ulfgard. you boldly move along while the road rises higher and higher after a long march you stand on the top of the mound of Ulfgard. it is the only hill around here according to a legend it is an ice giant's mound who died from the hands of Thor after angering him with a bad joke during a feast. All right, so let's make, let's see, here's where we are. Mound of Ulfgard. This is appropriate that I've been playing some Northgard. Here's Ulfgard. The fight lasted for three days before Thor managed to smash the giant's skull. Consecutive rulers have used the mound as a watchtower. In sunny weather, there is a perfect view from up here. Directing your face south, you recognize the distant walls of Utgard, miles away from here. This, From this far, the town looks like a child's toy made of wooden bricks. From the east, you see the crossroads with the milestone columns. Further on the horizon, a mountain range looms. Behind it, there is an ice desert. Okay, so we know there's a ice desert, which has never yet been crossed. In the distance, in the northeast direction, you can only see a white cloud, a furiously swirling storm, which is neither coming closer nor getting further from you. So some kind of spell has captured the snowstorm in place. Okay. Just making some notes here. In the north, you notice a black tower. From its top, alternating lights of different colors hit the sky. You don't know why, but the view disgusts you, and truly, it also causes fear. Okay. Then you turn your face to the west, behind dense hedges that are bare at this time of year. There are ruins of a watchtower so old that its name has been forgotten. From the south, the area ends the perpendicular wall. There are three loads, roads leading from the hill, west, east, and north. Okay, we know Udgard is to the south. We can't go there. It's unpassable. And we know these are ruins. You know, why don't we continue going to the west? Head toward those ruins, 38. You head west. You trudge for a few hours through snowdrifts till you reach a circle of thorn bushes. From the center of the circle, a stone column arises with the engraved figure of a war hammer on it. Have you ever been here before? No. We go to 145. The Ruins of the Fortress. 
You break through the thorns, and only a thick leather caftan saves your clothes from being torn. Getting out of the bushes, you notice the ruins of a fortress. In the past, this place has been ruled by some count or a prince because you seem to see some jagged, faded deritus of penance on the wall. However, today, they are only bleak remains of its previous glory. There is something disturbing in the architecture. Weird disproportion of doors and windows remains of unusual sculptures. Suddenly, a cry for help reaches your ears. You don't hesitate for even a second, and you run to see, at last, at least, who is calling, you jump out from behind a corner and see an extraordinary scene before your eyes. In the circle of stones that must have been a watchtower back in its good old days sits a fat man in a scarlet cloak lined with ermine fur, trying to chase away three white wolves with a branch. The animals growl dangerously with every second. They seem to be closer to pulling the man down from the remains of a wall. What do you do in this situation? Okay, so we can attack the wolves with a weapon, think of some clever way to rescue him, or prefer not to confront your overexerted strength and you quietly back away. Huh. Let's think here. So, I don't know any stat upgrades. Our wisdom is seven, our dex is seven. checking notes. Let's try to think of some clever way to rescue him. 135. Test your wisdom. On a success, we go to 86. On a failure, we go to 144. All right, let's get some dice. Let's get a refresher on how to do a test. We're going to roll 2d6. Pass the test. The total combined score must be less than our tested attribute. So we have to roll below a 7 here. Alright, so we need below a 7. Six. Success. So on success, we go over to 86. The ruins of the fortress. You quickly run back to a clump of bushes and break the driest thorny branch. You make a makeshift torch out of them and add dry brush from your own stores. Wrap it with a handkerchief and pour oil on it. Your hands tremble with nervousness when you kindle your provisional weapon using a fire steel. After a moment, the torch is burning. With a menacing battle cry of the dwarves waving a flame, you throw yourself at the beasts which are weak from hunger beasts. At the beasts which are weak from hunger beasts. Interesting, that was a weird sentence. You see panic in their eyes, and for the duration of the fight, add yourself three points of dexterity. Okay, now we're going to 144. And we're going to do a battle here. Speed is two. Wolf one, wolf two, wolf three. Each of them has a speed of three. Wolf one has a dex of seven. Wolf two has a dex of six. Wolf three has a dex of five. And we have... Different wisdom scores. Wolf 1 has a wisdom of 3. Wolf 2, wisdom of 2. Wolf 3, wisdom of 2. And some varying health here. If you can see, here's the stats that we're looking at. So nothing too crazy. But we do have an increase to our decks. So let's set up the combat. And we'll get into it. Okay, so we've got our combat set up. We've got the three wolves up here. Our character Thymond's down here. We got some dice we can roll. We've got our 18 hit points ready to go uh, right here. We're down to 18 because we kind of we didn't rest as much as we could uh, at the crossroads. 
and we're about to start this encounter. There's nothing to think about. You one must rescue the man, or he'll be eaten by wolves, and that's how it'll end, you think. You fall out into an open space and run for the beast with the menacing battle cry of the dwarves. Waving a weapon over your head, you engage the surprise skinny beasts. Here to play the confrontation out. Our speed is two. And that's where we begin. We'll check our quick reference card here just to take a look at the flow of combat. So first we can move. And there are eight total phases. First of being, being movement. And then we'll do any attacks. We can only move orthogonally though. We can't move diagonally. They don't count as adjacent either. Um, if we attack right after we move two squares, it's a charge attack. We get to deduct a dex from our enemies. I'm sorry, deduct a dex from ourselves. If we're flanked by two, three, and four enemies, it's one, two, and three dexterity reduction, respectively. There's a cunning strike we can do, which means we check our wisdom. Uh, if we have a success, we we'll give three wounds. If it's a failure, we'll get three wounds. And if a character gets three or more wounds, they're pushed two squares in the same direction. We can also push to an obstacle. If a character is pushed to an obstacle, we deduct a health. So first and foremost, I think we'll just charge. We'll go one, two. That's all the moves we can do. Now we cannot attack. So enemy number one is going to want to move. The wolves have a speed of three. So they'll go one, two, three. Second one will go one, two, three. Third one will go one, two, three. All right. They can't attack either. And so the next round is going to begin here. And we still can't quite get into range with anybody. So we'll go one, two. We can attack, but we're kind of distancing ourselves from the larger clump of enemies here. There we go. One, two, three. One, two, three. One. This enemy will attack. So let's go ahead and roll some dice. This is Wolf 3. We'll double check their decks. We'll see here is a five. All right, so we need to take a look at our attack and defense results here. So the attacker's decks in this case is a five. We're gonna roll a d6 plus any modifiers. In this case, we don't have any modifiers. All right, so the attacker's total is 11. And our defense which we get to add a plus three, two. So we're having a total of 10, which is awesome. 10 plus two is a total of 12. We're gonna win, right? Because five and six is 11. Right, so since we won, the attacker is actually gonna get some injuries. So we have the defense result, which is a 12, minus the attack result, which is an 11. So there's one plus the defender's weapon bonus, which in this case is zero minus the attacker's AC, which is in this case is zero. So if that's right, we'll double check. Our wolf number three is going to uh, get one wound. Okay, so the next round begins and Tymon is gonna consider what he wants to do here. We could move kind of up and around this guy and consider it a charge attack, which means we can add one to the attack. So let's do that. We'll move two, and then Timon gets to attack. So let's roll our attack here. All right, so that is a two plus our 10 total dexterity for a result of, it's the same roll we got last time. So it is 10 plus two plus the one for the charge. So that's a total of 13. Defense roll is a one, so that's good. One plus the dex of wolf number three is five, so we've got six that we're looking at. 
And let's go ahead and calculate some injuries here. So the attacker won, so our result, which is a 13, minus the defense result, which is a 6, means we get 7. And we're going to add the attacker's weapon bonus. In this case, we're still at 0. Minus the defender's AC, they don't have any AC. So we are going to deal a total of 7 wounds. And that'll be enough to take out this first wolf here. He only had five hit points left. And we have taken him out there, as you can see. That was a good roll. It's nice to have that torch. This guy goes away. Right, so next up, the enemies get to move and attack. First guy is going to attack us. His attack roll is... we got to remember his stats are going to be different. He's just moving one, so this is not a charge attack. But his dex is a seven, so he's going to roll a total of ten as the attack roll. And then our defense bonus here. We still get a plus ten, which is nice. Oh, but that's a one, so we're looking at a total of eleven to ten. We're still going to win, which is good. So again, 3 plus his dex of 7 is 10. Our roll is a 1 plus a 10, giving us 11. So if the defender wins, we get the result minus the attacker result. So 1 wound plus the defender's weapon bonus, which is 0, minus the attacker's AC, which is 0. So 1 wound is going to be dealt to wolf number 1. And he's the guy with the most health. He's got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 health. All right, next up, wolf number two is going to move to, so this will be a charge attack. So we have to add a plus one to this. His roll is a two, plus the one for charge, plus his dex, which is six. So he has a total of eight. We will be at 13. So because of that, uh, that's a difference of... Five, meaning we will deal five wounds to wolf number two. That was a good roll. So his result was actually, a, let's see, three plus, with a nine. Okay, so he still has three left. Gave him one too many injuries there. Okay, so new round is going to begin. I think we could move over here to... Wolf 1, get a charge attack out, and then hopefully push him into like an obstacle here to inflict some more damage. All right, so here we go. Our attack roll is 13 plus 1, 14. His defense... You know what? Actually, he got more than three wounds. If character gets three or more wounds, he is moved by two squares in the same direction as the push. I think. I think we can push enemies out of the way. Yeah, because we dealt three wounds exactly, not four, three. All right. So our result is 14. Defense. Oh, that's good. Uh, total of eight. So 14 minus eight is six wounds. And if character gets three or more wounds, they're pushed two squares in the same direction as the push. All right, so one, two, boom, he's gonna hit an obstacle, get one more wound. 
So that means we're going to deal a total of seven, which will be enough to take out wolf number two. So next round begins. We're going to move two and wait here. They'll move two and attack us. Their attack is... Oh, pretty good. A 10 plus a charge. So they're at 11. And we are looking at 14. So we win there. 14 minus 11 is 3. And that's going to be enough wounds to take out the last wolf. So there you go. Success. All right, so here's what 41 says. You help a portly man climb down the walls. He stumbles and tears his lavish coat. I don't know how to thank you, gallant warrior. He calls gladly, but still clearly trembling. I was just returning from Tusculum to Norin. When the crew of so sailing ship started a revolt. We took the most precious furs of snowy foxes, and those bastards let me out in the middle of nowhere. That traitor Angram Thug. I hired him for protection, and he was the one who started the rebellion. Can you imagine? What a stinker. Forgive me. Um, but of course, calls the rotund gent, slapping his hand on his bald forehead. Allow me to introduce myself. I am Alcest, the merchant. He bows down. You bow to him, too, and introduce yourself. All right. So I need to make some notes here. Alcest is a rescued merchant. He hired... What's the guy he hired's name? Angram. Ingram Thug, who started a rebellion? Oops, where are we? Okay. So how did it happen that they took only your wealth and not your life as well, you asked, intrigued. Thug is a very superstitious person, or he is very superstitious. Just like the whole nasty Orcish tribe, Alces spits right on his own shoe. Yuck, you know. I've invoked his god, Loki, and he spared my life, probably hoping that wolves would eat me, which would surely happen. If it weren't for your help, let me repay you. Alces reaches under his coat and takes out a jingling pouch. Okay, we can take the payment or not take the payment, I feel like we might not take the payment, just try to be a good Samaritan here. Take a step back. It's not right to take money for rescue. Not for money did I pull out the steel. There's a flash of admiration in Alcest's eyes. Unusual speech it is, coming from a dwarf's mouth. It wasn't my intention to offend you, my lord. In that case, take this ring instead of money. Accept it as proof of my gratitude. I got it once upon a time from a chief of one of the southern tribes. He claimed that it's got the power of chasing the ghosts of air away. You think for a while and take the ring into your hands. It's smooth, made of some black shiny wood. You bow down. I take this gift as a sign of friendship. You carefully put the wooden ring on your finger. Add it to your equipment. Cool. Wooden ring added. Alcest seems to be pleased. He asks you to join him on his way back to Utgard. We could agree, or we could just go east and west. I think we'll agree, but we'll pick up there next time on our way back to Utgard with Alcest, the merchant. Thanks so much for watching, friends. This is this is a fun new kind of choose-your-own-adventure type book. We're on the road to Utgard here, and we'll continue next time. So thanks for watching. Leave a like and subscribe, all that stuff. Share if you enjoy this kind of thing. And we'll see you next time on Save Your Game. Hopefully, more Storm Reavers. Bye-bye.